Now, let's look at how to properly filter our samples so that they each occupy the correct space in the kick drum. So first of all, let's go on to our low frequency samples. So that would be this one here. Now you see it's generating quite a lot of high frequencies which we may not necessarily need. Also, just because we've chosen to invert the phase, it doesn't mean that it's perfectly in phase with our other samples. Some of the frequencies may still be cancelling each other out and we can prevent this by filtering the parts we don't need from this kick. Now we could go to audio effects, select EQ8 and simply using a filter, filter out the high frequencies. But there's actually usually in all samplers, including the drum rack in Ableton, a really quick method by simply activating the internal filter, selecting what type you want it to be. So this is a low pass filter because it means that it lets the low frequencies pass and cuts away the high frequencies. And then we simply drag this frequency knob down. This is also known as the cutoff. So where it will start cutting off frequencies. And we'll cut off from about there with a 12 dB low pass filter. So we don't need this EQ. There you go. And now we've gotten rid of most of the high frequencies around here so that they don't conflict with our existing transient sample. Now, let's listen to both of them. Good. Now, onto the mid range kick. Now, this one, perhaps what I want to do is high pass filter all the frequencies up to around here so that the, the sub kick, this one, is not conflicting with the low frequencies of the mid range kick. So, again, on this one, we choose a high pass filter. So, this is a low pass, this is a high pass, and the difference is basically. The high pass cuts away the low frequencies and lets the highs pass. I can show you a visual representation of this like this. That is a high pass filter. Okay, so high pass over here. And we want to high pass up to about 80 hertz to get rid of that really low frequency. And all the mumbo jumbo over here. Now let's listen to both together once again nice and clean without the filters with. okay now once you've added filters I recommend you check the phase of your two samples again because these are not linear phase EQs or filters which basically means when you're using them it can internally move the phase of the sample by a, by a small amount um, so it may mean that even though before they were in phase, now they might have become out of phase again. So we need to check the utility plugin. We need to AB it once again to see if perhaps because the phases have moved, it's better to turn it off. Let's have a listen. Yeah, I do prefer it with it off. And I'm going to use a 12 decibel low pass, high pass filter because with 12 decibels, it actually, it, it still adjusts the phase of the sample that you're using the filter on, but not quite as much. It's a little bit easier on the phase response. You can get, get by this by using linear phase filters or linear phase EQs, but most of the, most of the time you need to find them as third party samples. So Waves does a linear phase EQ. I know that uh, some other mastering EQs are linear phase EQs. Let's look for Lin. There you go. So Waves has the Lin EQ, and that way the phase would not be moved at all. So whatever inversion you had initially, you wouldn't have to change that after you filter the samples. So since changing it to a 12 dB low uh, high pass filter, the phase was eased up a little bit. And I think going back to the phase inverted version of the low sample 
sounds better. Yeah, we get more of a low frequency response. Now we add our third sample and we high pass filter the third sample. Again, to get rid of all of the low, low frequencies here, because they're not really doing much to our overall kick sound, we've got enough low frequencies from our low and mid-range samples. Fantastic. Now, the next thing we've got to do is adjust the lengths of all of the samples so that they're not just playing for the entire duration of each sample because that can make the kick drum sound quite messy and not really well refined. We're going to get into that on the next video coming up.